start off with a brief opening statement, and then we'll go to questions. Well, I want to um, uh, just say one thing. Well, I'm, I'm excited about being in the Sunbelt Conference. Uh, uh, I'm excited about the, the job and the opportunity I have at the University of Louisiana Monroe. Um, it's a, a bit of hectic uh, three or four months since I've got here, or a couple of months, just getting everybody in place. Uh, but there's been a lot of things to get done and, and hired. A, I, I really enjoy, enjoy and like the staff that I've been able to hire. And I think one of the biggest things that we've been able to do here is, and, and we needed to do here, is first kind of re-recruit uh, the players that we have on the team, get to know them. Uh, so many things you learn about your players when you recruit players, where they're from, their parents, and their relationships uh, that you don't know when you come into a different a new situation. We've gotten to know our players Spring ball went very well. I think it was critical during spring ball that we do a, the best job we can, not necessarily putting in the offense that we're going to run or the defense that we're going to run, but evaluating the talent that we have uh, and try to, uh, to get to a point where we feel like we know the strength of each segment, of each position. So we've taken spring football to try to learn the strengths of each position where we might uh, need to uh, maybe add a person here or there, if possibly out of the portal, uh, or where we need to not emphasize one part of the game as opposed to the another part of the game because of our strengths and our weaknesses. And I think right now there are a million things to get done. We're a long way from uh, being where we would like to be, and that should be expected. We were 0-10 last year. We didn't, we didn't lead in any football games, uh, and we've got a long way to go. But I think – we, we're, we're in the right direction. We know what's got to be done. There's just a lot of things to get done. So, again, we're all excited. Maybe the biggest thing uh, that has just caught my attention or, or that I've been pleased with is just the enthusiasm of the team, of the community, of, of the school, and of the community, uh, and the excitement I've seen around just uh, uh, getting a kind of a fresh start with the program, of, of getting on with the program, and uh, uh, and it's just been a, 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 a all-in-one kind of thing where everybody just everybody just kind of on board. Let's go. Let's go work very hard. And I think that's the most important thing uh, that we all need to learn here at ULM. If we all work as hard as we can and all work to, together and all pull in the same direction, hopefully we can we can get this po program moving in a different direction uh, and t toward being competitive in our conference. Thank you very much, Coach. I will go to questions now. How has your perspective in coaching changed or evolved over the years? Oh, uh, you know, I, I don't know that. Uh, I, you know, the biggest thing when I, when I became a head coach in 1983 at 26 years old, I was a head coach at Salem College. My first quarterback that I ever signed was Jimbo Fisher. Things have changed a lot. Uh, but I've always, but I've been from Salem to Sanford and Sanford to Auburn. And then I spent 10 years at ABC in New York uh, broadcasting and then decided to start my career over again. I'm one of the few coaches that really has 15-year career as a head coach. Now I've had 10 more years as a head coach, and I started over. I went back to North Alabama, uh, won there, and then went to Akron and was seven years as a head coach there. Uh, but, the, you know, the biggest thing difference is is, is that – I, I think I, I'm, I'm smelling the roses. I'm appreciating the opportunity that I have. So much of my life, I'm having a father that's been a head coach in college since I was born, has been about becoming a successful head coach and getting to the top level and being uh, uh, the best I can be. And it almost seems like I was always working hard to get the next job. And work, and sometimes you you you, you work fast, you, you recruit fast, you transfer, you do this, you do that. And you don't stop to just recognize how valuable an opportunity that you have to work with young men, to change a, 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 an attitude, to change a culture. And I think at this point in my life, and I turned 65 this year, so I guess I'm an old man uh, in, as far as senior citizen. But I, I really see a Louisiana Monroe is a place that I might have the opportunity to come to utilize the other – I've been a head coach of five other places at every different level of football and maybe have enough background and enough of the things that I know about to help this program turn itself around. And so 
And, and so I guess it's the first job in all my career that I'm not looking for another one. And, 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 I, and I guess that most of the young coaches out there uh, all have gone through this, go through the same thing and that they're trying to do a great job so we can get that bigger job. And, and I think this is a big enough task as it is right here. What are some of the, th the first things that you've implemented since arriving at ULM? Well, I just I, I will say this. I, I've tried to tell our players uh, uh, about uh, about acting like a champion and, and being a winner. And I, you know what? And we never stop learning in this business. And I think having spent two years at Clemson with Coach Dabo Sweeney and the culture that he has created at Clemson, and you got to remember, he was my brother Tommy was the head coach at Clemson. Uh, that hired Dabo. Tommy was head coach at Tulane, then he goes to Clemson, and then Coach Sweeney took over after my brother left, and I've been there as an analyst for two years, and I think the one thing that re that was re-emphasized, oh, even back to the years that I was a graduate assistant for my father at Florida State, was that when you're when when you wanted, when you a winner and, we, and when you're a champion, uh, that you need to be a champion all the, t t all the time, and how you do anything is how you do everything. Uh, and then we have to be champions in the way we act in class, the way that we act walking down the sidewalk, the way that we act in, in meetings, the way that we act on the, on the playing field uh, or, or downtown. There's a certain demeanor and a certain character and a certain quality uh, of your actions that you need to do all the time. And so we've tried to, to explain ourselves that we can't just be part-time champions or part-time winners. We need, to, we need to have guys that buy in completely – uh, to be in that, that type of culture that we want to have here at ULM of being a championship caliber person, a, a just a top-notch person in everything that we do. And so I, and I think our players have, have responded to that very much, and uh, they, they are ready to move because, you know, when you have an 0-10 season, it, those players, players carry the biggest burden. They walk down the halls, they sit in the classrooms, and people say, well, gosh, they didn't win a game. And so these players, I think, have been so eager – to hear what we believe need, they can do to turn this program around. And I emphasize what they can do, not what somebody else has to do. And I think that's music to their ears in a lot of ways. Uh, Coach, what, what have been some of the success stories of this year's Springs practice? Gosh, want some of the success stories? You know, I, I, I guess when you're when you're you know you're you're, you're base, basically uh, we're not even at halftime yet in this first season. We're 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 a long way from the. We're just now getting through the start, and I think uh, the best thing I've seen, and I don't know if you can talk about wins and losses or successes and failures, but I think it has been very positive how well our offensive staff and our defensive staff have worked together. I've have had I've had a lot of uh, coordinators that work for me, a lot of assistant coaches over the over the many years that I've been coaching, and I like the way our staff works together. Not just offensive coaches with our coordinator Rich Rodriguez, or defensive coaches with our coordinator Zach Alley, and we're talking about two guys very different in age uh, and background. Uh, but not only how these coordinators have had to handle their sides of the ball but how our coaches have worked together for a common cause, how they've worked together to have practices that are both beneficial to the offense, to the defense. I've had some coaches that were at each other's throat the entire spring, and sometimes people think that's good that the coaches fight, but I really like the way in which our staff has come together and worked together for the, for the good of our overall program. And so, I mean, I think that's the, the one thing I've seen because I don't know that there are, there's any much – any part of our program that we've had enough time to really see real, true successes or failures. We've just got to, we're moving in that direction. What was your view of the Sunbelt Conference before you were in the conference and how has that changed since your arrival? Well, I, don't, I don't think it's changed. I thought it was, if not the best group of five conference in the country, it's one of the best. And I know that from experience because I think if you've lived up in the Midwest as I have uh, at Akron, uh, the Mere American Conference is a lot better than people give it credit for. I know that I uh, I had games when I was at uh, Akron. We played uh, Lafayette, and that we, we were one and one We beat them down there. We lost at home. We played Appy State. They knocked the fire out of us. And we played Troy down at Troy. Uh, and actually, uh, the year that they won 10 games a couple of years ago, we they I think we were winning to the last minute of the game. They drove the last minute to score and win the game. But, uh, but uh, on one hand – 
uh, I have great respect for the league. I know how good it is because I've coached against it, uh, and I've watched it, and I've been a part of the SEC I've been a, if, that have played these teams, played ULM when I was at Auburn. We played uh, Northeast Louisiana. We played uh, uh, Lafayette. We played a lot of teams from this conference, uh, but I've also played against them at Akron, and I've watched them and recruited against them uh, a lot. And so – it's a it's a it's a very very competitively great coaches uh, that 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 are just outstanding. We know that will be the coaches of the future. Many of the coaches, the biggest names in our profession, will be guys that are right here in our conference right now. Uh, and uh, so well coached, outstanding football players, uh, and you've got to be very very good. I think the coaches that I have on my staff that come from Power Five. I don't think they realize at times how good group of five coaches are, how group, how good of football teams they are, and how many outstanding football players there are. But I do. I've spent I've spent much of my time uh, uh, out of the SEC and coaching in other places. And we have time for one more question, Coach. Uh, how exciting is it to go into a job that already has a good rivalry going with the Raging Cajuns? And I know it's not till the end of the season, but. How important would it be to get off the get that rivalry off of the victory? Oh well, I mean that's a long way down the road for us. I mean we got to we we, have, we we like to lead a game. We're thinking about stopping the game and calling timeout the first time we have a lead, so we can actually take a picture of the scoreboard without leading somebody. We haven't done that since 2019. Uh, but rivalries are important. I, I, I know this rivalry is very important uh, to both schools. And, uh, and we, I take rivalries very importantly. I played at West Virginia University, and one hour away was Pittsburgh. Uh, and we didn't have a good year unless we beat Pitt, and Pitt didn't have a good year unless they beat us, and that was critical. And then from there, I went to Florida State, and the Gators were our rival. And at Florida State and Florida, nothing was bigger than that. And, of course, uh, uh, then I go to Auburn, and anybody that's been a part of the Iron Bowl, I had five years of the Iron Bowl as a head football coach, and uh, I know how important that is. Um, and then I go to Akron, uh, and people say, well, what about Akron? What do you know? Well, Akron is 11 miles from Kent State University Stadium. Our rivalry, our stadiums are 11 miles apart, kind of like Henderson and Wachita State that I both played. Uh, and when your rival is 8 miles apart, 11 miles apart, uh, you understand uh, you got to live with those people every day. So rivalries are huge, are huge with this game. I've been a part of some of the greatest rivalries in football, uh, and I know how important it is. And, and going back to that Kent State game, uh, thank goodness in my seven years there, we won five and won the last four against Kent State uh, in five out of those seven. Uh, I'm not saying we have any chance of even coming close against Lafayette, but we know who our rivals are, and we know how important that is to this great game in Sun Belt, uh, in Louisiana, and all over the country, one of the biggest parts of college football are the great rivalries that we have. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon, Coach, and uh, good luck as you continue getting ready for 2021. Thank you very much.